Hello, my name is Ben Najera, and we are going to talk about Zerto. We're going to go over a quick whiteboard and we're going to explain the steps involved in implementing a Zerto infrastructure. Zerto is a disaster recovery solution. It's an enterprise class disaster recovery solution that can be installed very quickly so you can achieve disaster recovery and it can be done in less than two hours, or at least that's what we have seen out in the field when doing implementations. Typically, we have uh, run four virtual machines or, or um, hosts running virtual machines, and uh, to set up Zerto, it's so quick that in less than two hours, we are ready to start the replication. And we're gonna go over the whiteboard, and we're gonna explain how this is done, and you're gonna see how easy it is to set up. So let's get to it. Typically, when we implement Zerto on a customer site, there's two sites and there's two vCenters. So one of them is production, and the other one is DR. In this particular installation, we have four ESXi, ESXi servers. And we have four ESXi servers at the other side. But Zerto is very flexible, it's hypervisor agnostic. So we could have we could have had ESXi in here, we could have we, we could have had hyper V in here. We could have different hypervisors and still provide a disaster recovery replication. Uh, in this case, we have HP servers and Hitachi storage on both ends, but Zerto is hypervisor agnostic. I mean, it's hypervisor and hardware agnostic. So we could have had a NetApp in here, we could have had um, a, a VNX or a Unity in here, it still works. We could have had a VxRail in here and Nutanix in here, and it still works. So we have that tremendous flexibility that allows, that allows us to do all those things. So we have one, two, three, and four ESXi servers for this particular scenario. Um, so this is what we have, and the first thing we do to deploy Zerto, we have a VM, the production side. This is going to be a Windows server. Uh, Zerto, the Zerto Virtual Replication Manager uh, the Zerto Virtual Replication Server, it works on top of a Windows machine. So we install it in here, it takes only a, a few minutes. And this we call the ZVR, or, or Zerto Virtual Replication Server. Once we have this uh, server in place, then we install one VRA for ESXi host, a VRA. And the VRA is the Virtual Replication Appliance. So that's, those are the virtual machines that are going to do the actual replication. So we have one for ESXi host. This is very quick and what we do with Zerto you typically don't have to go to a class. It's so simple to use that we usually have the user install it so we have a ZBR in here. When we install the ZBR in here, we install the license. When we install the ZBR in here, we just pair it up. This makes it so that the ZBR in here is aware of what's going on in the vCenter in here and what is going on in the vCenter in here and vice versa. The, the ZBR on the DR side is going to make um, the, the, the ZBR on the DR side is going to be aware of what's going on at the DR in production. So both of them are going to control the activities to um, perform the replication and fail over and fail back. Um, at any rate, we usually have the, the, the customers do this process and they are learning it as they are installing it. It's very simple. There's no three or five day class.
it can be learned on the fly. So up to this point, up to this point in here, we have our entire Zerto virtual infrastructure, Zerto um, virtual replication already set up up to this point now and we are ready to start replicating to start setting up our vms for replication it's in in this process takes less than two hours can you believe can you believe i mean up to uh, a few years ago it was not possible to do this it was not possible to use a product that was so simple to use and so simple to deploy that would allow you to have your replication ready in less than two hours with the customer doing the learning it at the same time and doing the installation this is very exciting i know i know so what we do in here after this um we ask the customer to uh, let us use um let, let us replicate a, 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 a vm it has to be a vm preferably that is not used in production it's usually a vm that the, they use for testing purposes more than likely it's going to be a, a windows machine that they use for very simple things, uh, non-related, maybe some functions, maybe some IT uh, department functions exclusively, something that is not going to, that they're not, they're not going to be afraid of, uh, of crashing it, right? They never crash it, but it's also, it, it, it's always um, a good way to start testing it. It's always a, a good way to set it up for replication and do the failover and failback uh, testing, and uh, we're not going to be interfering with any production. At any rate, so we ask for a, a VM that is non-production, that is as small as possible. I'll tell you why in a minute. And we start setting up the replication. So for the replication, what we do uh, at the VRA in production, we configure the first VPG. Let's say this is VPG1. Uh, VPG uh, stands for Virtual Protection Group. So in a VPG, you can have one or you can have more virtual machines. So we start with one virtual machine and the VPG, and uh, we start the replication. And the VPG, we save the information. We tell which one, which virtual machine is the one that, that we want to replicate. And let's say it's a, it's a Windows machine in here. And we start replicating it. The VPG has all the information, and the VRA is going to start replicating. Let's say that we replicate it here. We can choose where it goes. We can choose what IP address is gonna take at the other end, and it's gonna be replicating, but it's not going to be up and running in here. It's just going to be replicated if it needs to be brought up uh, online at the VR side, then we do a failover. But anyway, we start the replication, and depending on how, depending on how much bandwidth is available in, um, on, the, on the WAN link, uh, and depending on how busy the VM in here, the VM is in here, uh, it's going to take, I don't know, depending on the size of the VM, it can take an hour or two. It varies a lot. But what we do is, like, for example, with this customer, we started the installation at 9 a.m. By 11 a.m., all of the, uh, the Zerto VMs were done. So we start replicating. We go to lunch, come back. The VM is ready. It's already replicated. And when we start, we start our testing. So we start doing a, a failover uh, test, and then we start doing a failover move. So failover test, you just do testing, and um, the, the VM comes online in here and it stays uh, online in here. But in here, it connects to an isolated network. So therefore, there's no impact. So we do a test, and then we do a, a failover move. In that case, yes, we fail over from here to here, and then we fail it back. So we do that, and in one day, in one day, we set up our entire infrastructure and we did our first failover and fail back. Do you know of a lot of solutions that can do that? This is very exciting. It's it's very um, innovative. It's very interesting, and there's a lot of flexibility. For example, in here, if you don't have a DR site. You can do this in the cloud. So you can replicate from here in the cloud. If you have some VMs that need to replicate in here and some that you will prefer in the cloud, you can do that. You can replicate some VMs in here and some in the cloud. If you have VMs that you need to have super protected 
and that need to be replicated and you have to, no matter what, have to make sure that they keep running. Okay, you can replicate them in here at the same time, replicate to the cloud. So there's a lot of flexibility in here. There's even a lot more to it than we have gone over, but for the sake of time, um, I'm gonna leave it in here. And um, I invite you to uh, continue to look into this product if you're interested. Uh, you visit the site uh, zerto.com and uh, also uh, you can email me, you can ask me with questions if there's something you want to know, uh, please be sure to do that. And uh, thank you for watching. This is, uh, I hope this was uh, helpful to you. And uh, my name is Ben Najera and thank you for watching.